Hello, I am Ahmad and in this video I'm going to talk about a cantilever beam which is under transverse load and we will study how to find out the critical force for lateral torsional buckling and also determine the deformation of the beam in post buckling. The software here is going to be RFM version 6 and we will check how the lateral torsional buckling after buckling of the element would happen. Let's do so. So assume that we have a cantilever beam with the length of two meters under force P at its tip at point B. And in this example, we can assume that we have I section IPE 240, for example. And the material is S235JR. So if you model the element as a beam in RFM, for example, and you try to find out the buckling load, it will fail because there is no line element to be under any compression. For that reason, we need to change the application uh, and the member from being a one directional member to be a two dimensional member, which is a surface. So in this example, I use RFM6 version, I think 51. And what we need to do, first of all, we need to define a section, new section, the material. There is no material here, so we can import from the library. S steel S235 and import a, a standard cross section, for example, IPE European standard 240 and S235 here and now we need to sketch it uh, in the model as a member 235 2 meters and this section is going to be fixed or rigid but as far as the load is going to be transverse load and it is not uh, applied as compressive load when you solve it you will see that there is no solution for that and you might see the error saying that uh, the element is not under any compression. For that, you can just select the member, click right, and then go to members, and here generate surface from member. You can also model it uh, as a surface member from the beginning, but this is very easy, and you can find this option under the members menu. One important note is that if your model is in 2D, then this option will be off and it is not working so just make sure that it's uh, in 3d mode now here we have the member two meters but now this is surface at the end we know that it is uh, completely fixed so then you can apply line support by selecting the elements or the lines at the end of the beam and change it to be a rigid element the next is apply the load if you want to uh, have a post buckling it is better if we check the buckling first and find out what is the buckling load so in this case you need to come back to the base data and activate a structure stability and we need to make a new load case usually i do not modify self weight and i make a new one so case number two i will write down this is not post buckling the first one is only buckling and you just uh, activate the calculate critical load structure stability add-on and that's all so then we need to apply a load at the end of the beam so for this case i'm going to apply the load on the upper flange as a force let's say this is minus 50 kilonewton just to start now we can run the model by default the mesh is 500 millimeter and you might see that the eigenvalues or eigen modes are not as you expected at some point, especially if you are dealing with a complicated uh, case and the beam is long. And you might see that uh, what you expected is not uh, happening. In this case, it is better you refine the mesh. I will show you how to do it. Let's see after this running. So from calculate, you can go to mesh setting and find out what is the mesh size here you can see that it is 0 0.5 meaning that it's on its default value uh, after checking this uh, 
structural uh, stability analyzes we can find out here we can see that the uh, value of lateral torsional buckling or the first mode of buckling of this case is 1.21 if i change it to the second mode you can see that it is not relevant to the portion the third one and the fourth one you can go further for more uh, um, modes and if for example instead of ipe you model hea or heb as far as the flange is uh, longer than ip then you might see in the first or second modes to have the local buckling in the flanges it's not in uh, the scope of this example but just for your information for, for this one it is easier if we go with the finer mesh to find out how it would affect so instead of 500 millimeter i will go with 100 millimeter and we can solve it one more time so now it is solved and you can see that 10 percent of the capacity is left it was 1.2 and now it is 1.1 about 10 percent or 9 percent is now uh, the result differs from the previous uh, meshing size so mesh is very important but uh, the eigen mode you can see that it is relevant to torsion now i would like to check if i apply let's say 75 kilonewton instead of 50 kilonewton after starting to buckle what would happen for the structure and what is the for example lateral deformation i'm interested in studying that part so now we can see that the critical load factor is 1.1 it means that e critical is 1.1 times the applied p so p was 50 kilonewton as a result E critical is 55 kilonewton now we are interested to see what would happen after this load is uh, passed and the load is greater than 55 let's assume that we are going to apply p equals to 75 kilonewton and we want to see what would happen as far as at the load of 55 kilonewton it starts to buckle and the first mode shape is going to be torsional at the end so we expect that the end or the tip of the beam starts to buckle laterally and after going beyond this 55 kilonewton the lateral deformation of the node should be significant now we are going to test this and for that we need to define a new load case i named this new load case to post buckling if you want to see post buckling then it cannot be geometrically linear so we need to have a new static analyzer setting for that you can open this edit static analyzer setting tab and usually i do not uh, modify the default options i select a new and here we are going to have large deformation to be activate and also we are interested in post critical analyzers you can select these two and I want to apply the load gradually because we know that we, if, if 75 kilonewton is the load and it is applied at once then the results are not reliable for that it is better if you apply the load to be increased gradually so for that reason you can set this uh, load increment value for example here I set it to be 100 this value is maximum number of iterations it's the solution of how many times the equation is solved and how accurate the result will be and then it is uh, selected as the solution so when you have 100 increments then if you are interested to see all the results you need to activate save results for all load increments and now we need to change the static analyzer setting to the setting that we set the only thing we need to apply the load at the position that we want so i'm going to apply 75 kilonewton in the same node that we calculated the post buckling load according to the load applied to that node now you need to analyze it about this uh, solver tab or progress window you can see that the loading is load case 3 for post buckling analyzes type is a static analyzes and analyzer setting is large deformation, Newton-Raphson post-critical, 
and method of analysis is according to large deformation and the load increment is set to be 100 so it starts to apply the load one by one and now it is in the 11th the next one is iteration it means that for each load increment it is solving for example for the 18 only twice so it means that with two times iteration the results are completely reliable and the error is very very small so if we divide 55 kilonewton which is the critical load by 75 it is 0 0.73 it means that when it comes to the 73 percent of the loading it's almost in the buckling phase so after 73 we should expect somewhere 73 74 that the solution should be done in uh, more iterations so let's check after 72 3 what would happen to this iteration still you can see that here it is two three times or one two then you have the solution one two you have the solution it's still 70 67 68 percent and now it's coming to 70 71 72 73 and from here or a little bit later on of that you can see that uh, now it is coming to four five six in the 76th uh, iteration and now it's solving the equation uh, more than one or two iterations in this graph also in the right top you can see that uh, now according to the calculation maximum displacement of the uh, beam is 20 millimeter up to 70 something it was completely linear and now you can see that it starts to uh, buckle if large deformation is off then you will see an error at this point and it says that it cannot converge or it cannot solve the equation and the, the reason is because uh, it cannot find the solution and the large deformation is off so the equations are different uh, if the iteration goes beyond 100 then it accepts the 100 iterations but if you are interested to have more accurate results you can change the uh, maximum iteration to let's say 200 300 or even 500 uh, for some examples i used 500 and it was quite fine and only one or two iterations went beyond 500 now here we can see that in the 78 79 now the deformation is getting bigger and bigger let's wait until it is solved and we can check the results now we can see that at the latest load increment when the load factor is one it means that uh, now 75 kilonewton is applied at the tip of the beam and here we can see that few iterations at the end are going beyond 100 as a result it stopped at 100 if you are interested you can set the iteration to be more than 100 to have more accurate results to see if it helps and one important thing if your load is far from the um, critical load let's say that in this example P critical is 55 kilonewton if you apply 500 kilonewton then even if you set the maximum iteration to be 500 times it might not solve all of them after a certain point for example if the load goes beyond 80 90 100 and then it starts to just stop after 500 times iteration now we have the solution and we can check how it looks like here you will see that we have the warning it says some errors and warnings occur during the calculation please check the table with errors and warnings for more detail and if we come to the message here you can see that the calculation did not converge but the results might be applicable to achieve more precise results increase the number of iterations or increments so here this is how it looks like and if you want you can check for example in y direction the deformation is going to be 33 millimeter so if you are interested to check the graph you can come to the navigator data and here at the end we have calculation diagram you can double click on that 
and here you can find out uh, more detail so in the horizontal axis i'm interested in nodes global deformation and i'm interested in uy for this node node number six in this model your model might be different and also here i'm interested in increment and also for load case of post buckling that we add the solution here you can see this nice graph it shows how the deformation would happen and how it uh, starts to uh, move in y direction if you are interested in total deformation you can change it and here you can see that exactly up to here it is linear and you can see that exactly 73 and after that it starts to buckle laterally that's why now the deformation total deformation is completely different again in uy you can see that up to this point which is 74 the structure shows it is stable and after that it starts to buckle laterally in the next tab we have tables here you can find out how many of them are more than 100 here we can see that after 94 if we go to 94 from here so the results are calculated but the iteration um, was 100 so we can assume that perhaps if you solve it with more iteration you might have more accurate result and diagram if you want to export it you can check and you can export it to your uh, excel if you are interested in other nodes you can just select another node and you can play with the given other options in this result type to find out uh, more interesting graphs Thank you for watching. We went through the post critical buckling analysis of a cantilever beam and we applied the load. First, we calculated what is the critical load and then we increased the load by about 25% or 22% beyond the critical and we started to determine what would happen after lateral buckling. And as we noticed, after the load reached to the critical load it starts to buckle laterally and immediately starts to lose its stability in the lateral direction also if you are interested you can change the direction of the force giving it a little bit slightly rotation or apply a very tiny load in y direction in this model and check how faster the buckling might happen thank you for watching see you next time bye